Coming from the Caveman Studios in Buffalo, New York. Welcome to Caveman Corner with your host, Jeff. Captain Caveman! Thanks. Click subscribe and the bell. Do it now! Hello, Ray. Hey, K-Man, what are you doing? What are you hiding for? I uh, I missed the Ken Shamrock interview, so I think I have to hide my face for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> oh, just your luck, K-Man. Just your luck. He pops up. When oh, you're not man. Here. When you're not That's here, right. he pops up. <laughs> yeah, Wednesday, no show. Thursday, no show. Friday, ah, you show up at 10. Wanted to start early. I got out of the gym late. I missed him. In 17 minutes, I missed him. <laughs> Yep. How was it? Was it cool to do podcast with? Don't worry, caveman. We make it up with Frank. I hope so. Are we gonna give? <laughs> are we gonna give Frank I, I, back ever? We go get him back. All right. So you did hang out with Ken Shamrock today. You guys were up at the um, the Valor uh, tryouts. How did it go today? It was pretty good. That was uh, um, it was pretty good. A lot of people showed up and uh, was ready to rock. How many people do you think there were? You had two students there, Caveman. I did. I had two guys that I had. Um, I had two of my guys. But uh, how many guys were at the tryouts? I want to say maybe over 45, maybe. Man, that's a lot. I heard there's a hole in the wall now. Yeah. <laughs> some, some guy named Wolf. <laughs> some guy named Wolf put a hole in the wall? Yeah. Did our boy D-Ron, uh, D-Ron knock him out? Oh, I didn't knock him out, but he heard him. Yeah, you heard him, D Ron, the big boy. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to get hit by D Ron. <laughs> Me either. Dude. Big shout out oh, to that boy. man, D Ron. I saw all the comments he put in the chat last time. Like, I'm glad he made it out there. I'm glad he got his opportunity. I'm glad he made the most of it. Hopefully, uh, they pick him up. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, I heard. Uh, I heard another uh, old alumni was there too. Oh yeah. yeah oh, the, the butch. Joe, no, the Joe Taylor stalker. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, he was there. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I seen him in the the ring, but I didn't. I didn't get to watch his match, so I don't know how he did. Yeah. Uh, he was a pro too. Good. I wonder how good he did. Yeah, <clears throat> we may have a couple of guests on today. I'm not sure. Um, I have an open invite for. Um, Oh man, I forgot the guy's name already. The guy that came on that was supposed to fight Ray Hart uh, on the reservation fights, uh, I told him if he pops on here, we'll shoot him a link. And then uh, Callan Phillips, or uh, Baby Stamp, whatever Baby Stamp, if she jumps on, we'll uh, we'll shoot her a link. She actually came to my gym. But uh, I want to uh, talk about Butch and Bubble real quick. I want to make sure I give them a huge shout out as our coach. I want to make sure that we uh, we talk about the event first and. Uh, uh, do you know how, how many pick, people are going to pick from there? Is it like uh, a Dana White's contender? Is it like the winners win or just like one person or maybe nobody or everybody? Or how's it work? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you were hanging out with them all day, right? Yeah, but uh, they just – I don't know. It's because it depends, um, Caveman. It's because it's, it's it depends on the character of the guy and and um, and skills, I guess. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, if, you, if you put on a little show with the smack talking or whatever, they might be like that. that. <laughs> uh, I want to give a big shout out to my dude Butch. I wasn't able to make it today. I was I was running class. Actually, I, I did a long class today. I had people from out of town come in, so we did some early rolling. Um, but uh, Butch went out today at fifty four. He represented the gym. He did a, a pretty good job. Uh, so I wasn't there, but uh, Ray was there, so he's gonna uh, give us the play-by-play. Yeah, uh, I gotta give it to Butch, man. He's tough, tough as hell. Um, he went swinging. He got some good hits in there, and um, uh, they were just banging, man. Butch trading hits, and then his uh, cardio kind of betrayed him, and uh, you know he couldn't. He couldn't hang no more, so he just took a knee and yeah. Yeah, he told uh, me his 
his knees got real wobbly. Like he he lost his legs a little bit, and uh, like he took a knee to take a stand and eight count. So guess what I told him? You told him good job. Oh no! Oh. I told him he should stop banging his wife. Because we're <laughs> weak in legs, dog. Oh man. Yeah, but I'm proud. I'm listen. I'm proud of Bush, man. Yeah. You know, somebody his age to do what he did there um, to bang, you know, and, and fight, man. You know, I I'd rather had that doing my my side, man. He's look at that. Bush is like I said, bang your wife. So he pushed so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a very good husband. Yeah, I love you, Bush, man. You are you're a good dude, man. You're you're a warrior and um. Not a lot of people could do what you do. So, yeah. So uh, they didn't really class up, class the fighters too much, huh? It was kind of just match you up. But hey, you go with him. I, they they had a scale there, so I guess it was weighing people to to try to match up as the um as best as possible, I guess. Yeah, but not like skill or age. How how young do you think the guy that was that? Uh, the, uh, um. <sighs> Uh, you gotta ask Bush that he might know, but I'm I'm pretty sure the guy was up in age too, but not yeah. not like Bush though. Probably yeah. the dudes in his forties, maybe. Yeah, Bush said the dude got abs and everything, so like he was pretty impressed by that guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. he did have it now. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did Bush is, if you don't know Bush, he's kind of a bowling ball. Um, he's uh he's lost a lot of weight. He's been training, but like he's definitely an older guy and a little bit uh. He's a little bit heavy for whatever weight class he's in. We're, we would get him down, obviously, if he's he's going to fight. But uh, him and Josh, they just went up. They they found out about it this week uh, when we started doing a show. And he put in his application on Wednesday or Thursday. So he decided to do it on Wednesday or Thursday. And then uh, Josh decided to do it Friday. So that's even crazier, his son Josh. And um, so I got – man, I, this has been weighing on me all day. So I okay. was uh, – Okay, well, before, before we start – before we start, okay. man, how old is Josh? Josh is 17. Uh, so he's 17. He's not 18 yet. So, um, uh, like, I had mixed feelings about this because uh, – so I'll okay. give the whole story. So the first thing I see is I see online that Bubba uh, – I heard from, from you and from um, – <laughs> Bush is, like, 17. I, I heard from you <laughs> and Bush that Josh was going to spar with Bubba, right? And then I was at the gym. And uh, I, I've seen the video of the sparring. I've, I've seen that it was sent, but I couldn't watch it at the gym. And then before I left the gym, I was mopping the mats, and I read, um, yeah, I whooped this guy, and I, I beat him up from Bubba. And, like, I stopped this guy, and he was, like, wow, I'm wobbly legs. And I was like, oh, my God. So uh, Butch beat up, you know, Butch has been a pro for, like, 20s, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, like, uh yeah, so Bob was on pro for like eight years, and uh, Josh hasn't even sparred anybody yet. So this is like the first time he's really like even sparred. So um, it was Butch and Bubba, and then I read this thing, and I was like, man, motherfucker, I was so fucking mad. And then like Bubba's writing that he he beat a fifteen year old up, and I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, and uh, but to and Bubba's defense. He um he messaged uh, Bush a few times and checked up on Josh and uh, whatever, dude. But I, like it was still that's still a little bit jacked up. And then I saw the match. So I think this match is just gonna speak for itself. I'm gonna play this right now because I have it ready to go. I'm gonna cue this up. I'm gonna play this, and I don't even think I need to say anything after we watch this. <laughs>
job. Hey, I mean, like, <laughs> I don't think you need to say anything else. Like, you, you see what happened. Like, it's pretty, it's not so bad for your first time sparring against a pro that's trying to, like, really fight with you. Yeah, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so why, uh, why did they stop the fight, Kate, man? What, what th was told to you? I, I don't know, like, um. They probably don't want to see anyone get really hurt. Uh, there's obviously a little bit of mismatch in skill. You can see that Bubba's more relaxed than, like, taking a shot. But, like, man, like, I don't know. It wasn't – that's pretty good for his first time sparring, really. Like, I I would give it to him. Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he never uh, – he never be, before, right? Yeah, I wouldn't be, like, super proud of that. Uh, Josh was gagging. Oh, man, what the hell is going on with you Chadwick's? Butch has too much sex, and uh, Josh is gagging. <laughs> okay, man. Oh, I'm sorry, Butch. I'm sorry, Josh, if you're watching this. <laughs> can't, can't, Shamrock didn't want no um, vomit in uh, the rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Josh did pretty good. You know, he was, you know, he, and especially in the beginning, he was, uh, I just wish he would have just stayed technical with it, with, with the boxing, you know, using the jab more. Yeah. And then come with the right hand, you know, he did pretty so good like, though. I'm proud of him and Bush, man. Yeah. I think I was kind of an asshole for being mad about it. Like, man, I was like, I was so mad at Bubba when I read this. I was like, Man, you're talking about pounding a 15 year old and like, but you know, K okay, man, he's just student, so you go feel some type of way, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I like. It's like it's a little bit of that in me coming out, but man, that really made me want to jump back in the ring and punch Bubba in the face. Like, I was like so mad today, and then, uh, <laughs> like, man, like, I'm just happy that he, um, he actually reached out to uh, like Butch and uh, checked up on Josh and stuff. So, like, I kind of feel like an asshole, but I kind of don't. <laughs> um, like Bubba's like a tough dude, man. You know, because like he's such an asshole at times. Like he's a real fucking piece of shit. And then, but sometimes he's good too. Like he, there's like that battle in him between bad and good. You know what I mean? And I don't want to bring oh, up the bad. Oh, when he's selling them tickets, oh boy, he does sell the tickets, dude. Yeah, like when he, when, when he hunts you down for a ticket to. Oh yeah, you better <laughs> you tell me buying a ticket. You better take care of the ticket. And uh, <laughs> oh no. I, I was just mad about it. I'm uh, like, you know, you always feel like you got one more left in you. And then uh, like, this is a good segue to, to get away from this before I say things I can't take back. And we'll jump into, um, oh, how about Robbie Lawler, man? What a way to go out. Oh, Ray's got to read now. So that we're going to get a slow response here. Here's the Jim Ray. Uh, Easton Hillmall. Are you talking about the gym with the um the um tryout? What's that? <clears throat> oh, my gym, my gym. Oh, is it, here. oh yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, our starts. We're in Niagara Falls. Uh, we are right in the Niagara Climbing Center, and we're open for business all the time. And of course, uh, this show is brought to you by Integrity Martial Arts. I think so, I think Ed Rogers wanted to do some training, K man. Some more, yeah. Time. Come train, dude. Like I watch uh, Ed's live the other day with him driving, and the way those people stop in front of his truck, he should probably want to come in the gym and punch people in the <laughs> mouth. Man, like, God, dog, I feel sorry for him. <laughs> I gotta check them videos out. Yeah, 
Every now and then he'll post one during the day of him driving. I'm like, oh my god, man, that's so, rough. So what's the address, okay, man? Get the man the address. Uh, one three 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 Strad Avenue. Uh, it's right off of the boulevard. It's right behind the Tim Hortons. Uh, please come check us out. We're there every day. Kids classes during the week every day at six to seven. Adult classes seven thirty to uh, whenever we close or I have a private, whatever comes first. Sometimes I'd be stuck there till midnight. Ray knows because uh, Ray's like, what time you got at gym? Okay, man, like, oh, I should be home by like midnight. Oh, I'm drinking Monsters today in honor of uh, Apache Mix. Apache's sponsored by Monsters, so like uh, I'm going to hook him up and drink a Monster on some of these podcasts now just for Pat. You know what? I get one too. I will get one for the next podcast and be like, Monsters. <laughs> yeah. Even though Rockstar is my favorite, I'll drink some Monster for uh, to help support Pat. What was the other one? Remember uh, Afro Pat? The pussy oh, he had pussy. Pussy energy. Pussy. <laughs> yeah. That one tastes like dog shit, though. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, Ed Rogers. If you come, Ed Rogers, I, I would train with you, brother. Me, the big boys. Yeah. Well, I got some big dudes, man, like Jared. Jared and you and Ed. and. Um, <laughs> uh, and let's I got, I got, yeah, let's do it. I swear to God, uh, Ed Rogers, you do it. I'm down with you, brother. We get some training. Ray, Ray has a membership, he just doesn't come. <laughs> Ray is uh, Ray's the best member ever because he just pays and he never shows up. Like, that's the, that's the best <laughs> kind of member I can get. Doesn't take up any space. Comes in and he works out for like five minutes and he's like, oh, I'll just help you guys out. He's the best. <laughs> but I got some big guys, man. You can get in there and you can we get some uh, roles in. Um, it'd be great. It's always great to have uh, good people in the gym. Yeah, Ray. Let's do it, Ed. Hell yeah. I'll show you guys both the schedule and I'll start a group chat with the three of us and we can uh, we can work that out. Look, I'm doing business on here. Now I can write this off. <laughs> this is great. This is great for my taxes, guys. Thanks for the thanks for the help. I'm not gonna post your number here, Ed, but thanks. <clears throat> cool. We'll get it going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep Ed's number in my phone because uh I had his number before, but I got a new phone now. Yeah. And a new number. <laughs> Ray has to change his phone all the time. Every time he's busted for the coke dealing. Is that, I mean, oh, I see, I'm not supposed to talk about that on the podcast. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> Anyways, oh, did you check out any of the UFC, Ray? What's up? Did you check out any of the UFC? Nah, I didn't get to check it out. But let's talk about it, though. <laughs> I want to know what happened. <laughs> Robbie Lawler had a retirement match. And okay. uh, he knocked the dude out and, like, I don't know, a minute, minute and a half. I was on my way to get some energy drinks while I was going on. And, man, did he – uh, woof, he looked fucking phenomenal, dude, like as good as he's ever looked. And uh, they even uh, – he knocked them out so quick, dude, they weren't ready. So they had to run some uh, run some ads, and they just ran, um, ran like, his, his career. And it was nice to watch, dude. It was so great to watch him go out with a big win. Or if you're a conspiracy theorist, they knew that uh, they set it up so he could win, and they had that all set up so they could run it, and uh, that could be too. But um, he looked he looked really good, and I, man, there's no better no better representative of an MMA fighter than Robbie Lawler. I mean, hey man, he started. I forgot what UFC was it UFC 40, Ken Shamrock versus Tito Ortiz. Yeah, and he was like uh, 19 years old. Yeah, he was then, 19 uh, years old. Ed's jumping ahead, but he's like, he can't believe Whitaker lost. Do Plessis <laughs> stop Whitaker, man? Like, uh, the word in our gym was we had we were talking about this all all the time in the gym, and uh, me and Nick Blackwell and some of the other guys. Uh, Nick Blackwell, his full name is Nick Blackwell. We always call him that because I forgot his name once, so I have to call his full name all the time. Hey, man, I gotta go. You gotta One go. Second. I gotta get something at the door. All right, I'll keep talking. Anyways. Whitaker got stopped. Duplessis beat him. And then um, <laughs> Ray's like, hello. <laughs> got some Pornhub stuff going on over there. Uh, anyways, 
Uh, Duplessis uh, got the win, and then the Stylebender came into the ring, and they uh, they had a big showdown, and there were some racial epithets thrown, and that looks like it's going to be a great fight. I cannot wait to see that fight happen. I haven't seen uh, Anna Sonia not like a guy in so long. It's so good to see that. Uh, I think we're going to see one of the, his best fights in a long time when he comes out there and he, uh, he drops some big hands on the guy. Uh, one other thing, Bo Nickel with a huge knockout. I'm a huge Bo Nickel fan. He came through, and everyone expected him to get a quick early submission, and he came through and he got a knockout. So Bo Nickel, awesome knockout. And, um, man, it was a, a good card. I didn't see too much of it. I just saw the highlights. Um, but it was really, really good. And then uh, in some local news, oh, man, you had a chocolate milk delivered? Yep. Ray's like, I got a podcast. I'm going to grow up with chocolate milk. This Did you is bang the, best the delivery cho- guy? This is the best chocolate milk ever. Hold up. You have this. an intense chocolate milk. You like that? Yep. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> He's like, I'll give you a tip. Or I'm going to gag. <laughs> Josh and a gagging mouthpiece. I'm just kidding. Ken Shamrock, like, hell no. I it's over. That I had that I had that joke for like the next 20 years. That was a – Butch should stop saying that. He he oh. submitted Tiki at UFC 40. That was uh that was his debut. Robbie Lawler, if you forgot what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um okay. And then I talked about the um, Anasan and Duplessis showdown in the middle of the cage when uh, Anasan was screaming the N-word at him. Wait, what? He was screaming the N-word? Yeah. He said, you're my N, you're my N. Oh, shit. Because they got some trash talk because uh, uh, Duplessis says he's not really from Nigeria because he lives in New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's that other video of him uh, – they were talking about this on Rogan, but I saw it a while ago, anyways, too. Of uh, Anasana saying, "I'm not, I'm, I'm Chinese." <laughs> when he fought in China, it's so funny. Uh, so many crazy things are going on. Um, another big news and note: I had um, uh, Baby Stamp, uh, Katna Phillips, came into the gym this weekend, and she got some work in. Uh, we kind of had like a group session with Boom uh, us and. Uh, and uh, whatever gym she's from, uh, Phoenix or the Templar Dojo. And uh, they came in and they, they got some work in. And uh, I was uh, mildly impressed by her stand-up. It was not not as bad as it shows in the cage. She's definitely uh, – she's got more – she either added more tools since the last time she fought or she has some performance problems in the cage. And uh, either way, man, I was, I was a little bit impressed. And uh, her groundwork was exactly where I thought it was and it needs some work. But – um. Man, I, I, she got a kickboxing fight coming up in Attica the uh, week after K4. So uh, best wishes to her. And if she's uh, jumping in here, uh, she can, we'll shoot her a message. So anytime you're in here, shoot, uh, shoot us a message and we'll, we'll put you on. Um, right? I'm looking for the K4 card too uh, while, we're, while we're talking. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, go ahead, Ray. What were you going to say? I was, hey, Kim, I was going to say, so... Certain fighters, you know, they look good in the gym, right? Um, hitting the pads and um, hitting the punching bags, whatever. And then when they come to fight, <clears throat> it's like uh, techniques are thrown out and they just go swinging. <laughs> and, right? they look, like, and they look completely different. So you think that's the case there? Uh, I, I think that she has either a problem with aggression, like she's um she feels bad like uh beating the girls up or something or maybe she's at the point where she wants to uh, she's a little bit scared to throw that first punch and like get the exchange going and like if i don't hit her hard she won't hit me hard something like that um because she's kind of like freezes up at times but man she was moving pretty good and throwing some heat i did a couple rounds with her too and uh she got a, a long way to go on the ground like I don't think she should be fighting MMA, and uh, I know some of the commissions are talking about not letting her fight. But uh, dude, I was I was mildly impressed by her. Like I was, I went in with pretty low expectations, and I, I came out, you know, impressed. And like I love to, like I love that. Like even though I talk shit about a lot of people on here, 
Like, I'll have every one of them come in and punch me in the face. You know, that's why I love having the K4 guys in. I'm getting a list on my phone, all the K4 guys that we've had in the gym. And they come in and we spot and we beat each other up. And, like, if I talk shit about you, man, there's, I will always go, I'll step on the mat with you and, like, we can, you know, you can show me what, what, what you're all about. And, like, I, I like that part of the sport, too. Now, Caveman, do you think the commission, um, like, in the future or, or – uh would change the rules a little bit for the MMA match. Like they would, uh, you would have to be like a, a, a blue belt to uh, fight MMA. I think it's hard to say that because, I mean, I think you have to go by record and, and how the people look in the cage because like being a blue belt doesn't mean shit. There's some really, really, really bad blue belts that fucking uh, are terrible. Like they couldn't be a lot of white belts and there's some blue belts that be me. Like, I'm a black belt, and I'm saying this right now. If you're if you're not a competition black belt, which I'm not, there are blue belts that will like own your lunch and and fucking some world champs, right? Like, got this guy that comes in, Mohammed, and if uh, we did a point match, man, he might beat me. Like, it's, it's close. I mean, he won't tap me, but like the rules are different. Yeah. And then like the rules of jiu-jitsu don't really matter in MMA because it's different. Like. When you can punch, everything changes, you know? Yep. There's no way to really regulate it besides for, like, your wins and losses. And um, when the losses pile up, they start talking about not letting you fight, though. So it's important that you uh, you speckle yes, some mean. wins in with those yep. losses. Yeah. All right. So you want to get into the K4 card? Let's do it. All right. So I'm scrolling down now to see what the first match announced was. And the first match that was announced was uh, Ransom versus Eddings. We're finally going to see Tyreek in the cage. Uh, he was supposed to fight the 765 Harry guy, and uh, that fell through. So hopefully this time he gets in there and gets a fight. So what do we know about the other guy? Uh, I don't know too much about him. Uh, oh, oh, like oh, oh! I, know. I think I know. He trains at the same gym um, Dennis trains at. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because Donald's talking about you, right. Yeah, so he'll be really good, man. That'd be a good fight. Um, so he's coming from a good gym, too. So yeah. it's going to be two guys coming from good gyms. I'm really sold on Tyreek, man. He's got so much power. I cannot wait to actually see him fight. He's so big. And uh, he only getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> he's just trying to make him die, and he'll be getting bigger. So that's good to see. Like, I would not want to have the whole pass for that, man. That's a big-ass Dude, oh, I could then, imagine uh, going past the sponsors. Then, um, Abu Bajor is taking on Hughes. Uh, that's another uh fight that we got going on. Uh, that poor guy, man, this is like the third K4 card he's supposed to be on, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully he gets a fight this time. Hughes fought in the last card, we commentated him. Uh, he's a pretty solid fighter. I don't know about the WNY guy. Uh, I still don't even know how to say his name right, even though he's been on three cards. I haven't seen him in the locker room yet, so I haven't been able to ask him how to say his name. I know I'm killing your name, dude. I apologize. And uh, you can punch him in the face about it later. And, uh, I, dude, I'm terrible with names. I'm, like, probably the worst person that should ever be a commentator. But I love the sport too much to not be a commentator. Um, I'm sure we're going to get with Ben, and we'll uh, we'll we'll team up our podcast, the AOJ and the uh, K-Man's Corner. And uh, or all the calls AOC. I'm sorry. Oh man, that's the worst AOC <laughs> podcast name. Suck. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Hey, he's selling shirts now. Yeah, he's selling shirts. I said we gotta get some gay man's corner shirts. I'll get on top of that, and we'll get uh we'll get some kind of telemarketer thing going on in here. Sell some stuff. Uh, we we're not very good at monetizing our stuff. We just do this for fun, really. But uh, we'll get better at it. We're gonna we go do like the old WWF hotline. Yeah, one nine hundred. You you want you want information on K four? Call yeah. Caveman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's gonna be a uh, man. I can't wait to see this guy fight. Uh, that'll be a banger. Then we got uh, Sean Doyle against Oliver Regino. We talked about this fight a little bit um, before. Uh, on the last podcast, but this one is going to be a banger. Those two guys are some of the best uh, Muay Thai guys in the it's, area. It's going to be Western New York versus New York City. 
Yeah. Who are you going for, Ray? You know what? I, I was born in Brooklyn. I was born in New York City, so I don't know. I mean, Sean I know, Doyle. dog. This is tough for you. Doyle yeah. is like Sean Doyle he's might tough, be the man. best person. Like he's a great person and he's a great fighter. He's so mild mannered. Like, yep. I love Doyle to death. I I'm so high on this kid, and uh, hopefully I can get some rounds in with him before the the fight. I the fight, yeah. Dude, He's good everywhere. His clinch is good. His kicks are good. His elbow is good. Everything's good. His tattoo is good. Yeah, he got some nice tattoos there. Yeah, um, his uh, aggression's good. His clinch is good. Man, this is a tough fight for Oliver. But Oliver was so good everywhere too, man. Yeah, then Church Street boxing man. is uh, a good gym. So it's gonna definitely be a it's gonna be a good fight, man. It's it, gonna it's, be early I think call for fight of the night. Yeah, that might be. Yeah, I agree. You know what, Ray? We didn't. So we never set this up, right? So we didn't work with Keith, and we didn't set up. Um, we didn't set up a way for us to sell tickets. But I'm, I, uh, I'm gonna put up a hundred dollars of my own money, and we're gonna name a fighter of the night, and we're giving him a hundred dollars from Caveman's Corner. Okay. It'll be Caveman's Corner fighter of the night. I put. I put. Yeah, I put fifty. You put fifty. Yeah, Ray's like, I'll put 50, and then when we got there, he's like, I'm not 50 cents, K, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a $2 bill, K, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but let's do that. We're going to put up $100 for the fucking, for the K-Man's Corner Fight of the Night. Okay, yeah, I'm down for that, though. I'm down. Yeah, and then, then we can pick it, and there's no, like, it's just on us. It's who we think is the best fighter tonight. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. Like, we're going to pick the best fighter tonight, and we're going to give you $100. You're going to be yep. the K-Man's Corner sponsored athlete of the night. <clears throat> we'll start yep. doing that. I think that's a good thing for us to do. I think so, too. Yeah, and if they haven't been on the podcast, then they can't win it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, part of, that's, that's part of the agreement. You got to be on the podcast. <laughs> that's part of the deal. How about that? <laughs> or, the, uh, like, if we do the AOC K-Man's Corner, that, that counts, too. So like when Ben gets you on, Ben, if, if you're on with me, Ray or Ben, uh, you're you're involved in that. But since Ben's not here tonight, we're making this deal tonight. He doesn't get to pick. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I like that. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna clip this out and I'm gonna put it up as a clip too. Okay. That part. Um, man, that's a great fight. I probably one of those two guys are gonna win the um. Win it, and then we got Tharp versus Walker. Uh, man, that Nick Walker stop Gay Vega. Uh, that says a lot. And he's fighting Dylan Tharp, who beat our champ, beat the champ Isaiah Cat. Even though, like, whether no matter what we think about the decision, whether it was a good decision or bad decision, he still he holds won. a win over the champ. Yeah. So um, I think if he beats Walker, man, he's got to get a shot at Isaiah. Okay, but how about if Walker beats him? Man, I don't know. I don't know. Do he, does he get a title shot? Maybe, maybe. He doesn't really got a lot of fights, though. Like, Tarp's got a lot of fights in K4. Okay. I, okay, I'll give you that. i give you that. i give you that. But Walker, I like Walker. He's uh, he's tall, long, and... Rangy, smoked Gabe. Um, and if he smokes Tarp, he should definitely get a title shot. Like, if he smokes him like he did Vega, like, you yeah. can't... You can't not give him the title shot if he smokes him, right? Like, oh, he's in. He's watching right now. Hey, Nick. <laughs> invite him on. Yeah. Do you invite him on, okay, man? Uh, yeah. Send him a send him a link. How the hell you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if my friends. Hey, Walker, you want to come on? Uh, he didn't message back. Oh, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll keep talking while we're waiting for him. But like oh, I'm yeah. saying, yeah, if he if he uh, starts to start, gotta put him on. He needs on for soon for sure. Uh, message message Ray or Caveman's Corner right now, and we'll send you a link and we'll jump you on real quick. Cool, this is awesome, man. We're gonna get Nick on. He's just trying to get that hundred bucks, dog. 
that's how we get guys. We got to pay them. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Let me see something. Ray's, uh, Ray's going to send you a link, and it's going to be a link, and it's going to send you to this room. And then you just click yes to the camera, make yourself a name, you can jump on. All right, let me see. So if he starts with them, for sure, uh, we gotta, you got to put him in the title contention with Isaiah. Um, as long as Isaiah is okay, I know he just uh, just fought and uh, had a tough go of it, but I, I think he's okay. I think his ribs are all right, so he should be up and back fighting soon. And this is a good title contender fight, man. Uh, I'm super pumped to see this fight. Uh, it's interesting to see how Tharp's going to deal with Walker's length, too. Like, Tharp's a big guy, too. The clinch is going to be an interesting exchange in there. Oh, yeah. Then we got a, a heavyweight title fight. We got Randolph versus Cargo. Man, Randolph was awesome in his last outing for uh, K4. Uh, it was before that we were calling the shows. Uh, it was a show that Derek fought on, but, man, he put on a great show. He looks really, really good. I was super impressed. Good elbows, good everything. And uh, I don't know much about cargo. I'll check it out. Like obviously, we we didn't sit down. We didn't talk about what we were uh, what we were gonna even talk about. We just wanted to sit down. And I was so mad about Bubba. I was like, let's do a podcast. And then by the time we started to do the podcast, I was less mad at Bubba. And uh, so <laughs> Bubba's talking about being on this card too. So maybe we'll see Bubba Norton on here. Um, we'll see. Hey, Bubba, you here, Bubba? We already played Bubba's fight in here. Uh, then we got Bowmeyer versus Dorian Gordon. And um, this has generated a lot of heat online already. These guys are going back and forth. I, I had nothing to do with it. I know. Uh, Bowmeyer and Gordon, man, these guys are a little bit ridiculous for uh, <laughs> guys that don't have a win between the two of them. Talking a lot of mad trash. Uh, Dorian's not part of 765 even anymore. But they're still sticking up for him. I don't know what's going on. Uh, there's just like some crazy stuff with these seven six five guys. Who knows what's going on? Who you uh, who you going for? Who you at? Uh... Well, we ain't making picks over them. I, dude, I don't know yet. Um, like just we should I, we should make a pick yet. I don't even know right. what weight they're fighting at, but um, I'm gonna say that Gordon, dude, Gordon was like impressive against Reichardt. I'm gonna pick on him. I'm like. Man, I feel like I got choked up by Skylar. With your shorts on. With my shorts. Like, yeah, my shorts on, dog. Like, it's hard <laughs> tough to beat the shorts. That's true. I forgot about the shorts, Jinx. You got fucked. I, I have to be careful who I lend my shorts to. Maybe I, maybe I have mine. <laughs> oh, damn. If wow. I have my shorts on, you better look out whoever I'm fighting. <laughs> Oh, oh man. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm kind of interested to see that fight just because they talk a lot of shit and someone's yeah. got to win. So someone's always got to go. Usually it's that the other Austin, way around when you say that. But that, but that Austin kid's got the reach. He's tall, right? Yeah, he's tall. But dude, he can't grapple at all. Man, he got choked out by Skylar with a rear naked choke with no hooks in him. Like, I, mean, I want to see what he, he he's done about his um. His grappling because it's an MMA fight, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna uh, say this though. I'm gonna say this came out. This is the only thing I know about the two guys that fight in that Austin, they saying that this is what they say. Oh, 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 look what we got here. Good evening. Hell good yeah. evening. Hey. What's, going on, man? what's good? What's good? <laughs> what's up, man? I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, I caught me at like a random time. I was just I was just scrolling on Facebook, watching TV, my girl. I was like, oh. They lied. I was like, let me tune in. And so they talking about the new, the news and stuff. I was like, oh, UFC and K4. I was like, K4 all newsworthy. Let's go. Yeah, 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 dude. Like, for sure we got to talk about you, man. You stopped the KO King. Man. Like, but I'm not going to lie. In retrospect, I did put my foot in my mouth because I, I was shout out my boy Nat because he went and got that uh, Leon Edwards type KO later on. The night. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. He had me standing up on my feet. I was like, yep, there goes the knockout of the night. He got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. Yeah, you lost that. Like, we, I was like, man, that's going to be the knockout of the night. He killed the KO King. And then. Yup, and then, dog. like I said, put my foot <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that put his foot in his mouth. Man. Uh, was... Unfortunately for him. But, you know, he coming back. He, he came back. <laughs> yeah. That that was probably the best uh, knockout in K4 history, man. It was coming from behind. Everything was great. It was such a good fight. 
Uh, not not taking anything away from your fight. Your fight was awesome too. Yeah, but, uh, awesome. man, that was a great that event. Hard to top. It was a great event, and honestly, we like I can tell you that the the guys, us guys over at Empire, we're planning on putting putting together another good show for y'all. Right. Yeah, well, can you tell us about your other guy on the card? Okay, uh, which one? So we've got uh, Isaac. Uh, you there was a uh, Hughes, and um, there's me, and then who else is going to be? Is Eddings from Eggs your on. Gym? Eggs on Dervis Sholey. His poster just got put up the other day. Oh, I didn't see that one. I'm still scrolling up. So that's all. We just uh, we're like, man, we haven't talked about any K4 fights, so we got to talk about because it it's coming up soon. So we got to talk some stuff. And then, uh, like we said, I'm gonna put up a hundred dollars of my own money for uh, the K Man's Corner Fight of the Night. So uh, whoever we think is the fighter of the night, we're gonna give a hundred dollars to. Oh, there's my man Dennis. Let's go, yeah. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis be like, I gotta run, man. I can't be fighting. Man. I gotta do some running. Bro, Dennis, he out, Dennis is different. He he outpaces me, man. I thought I got good pace and good cardio, but Dennis got it. <laughs> Dennis got it, got it in a whole other way. That's awesome, though, man. He looked really good in his fight too. He didn't tire out. That was really impressed with his fight too. Great first show, are, great debut. You guys, and Liam, man, Liam, huge win for Liam too. Oh you yeah, on a roll. Man, was it the whole gym? Was it? Yeah, even on was it Liam first round sub. Dropped him with like what his second leg kick, like in yeah. 10 seconds. <laughs> like, I, I was, yeah, Liam's a great training partner, sparred him a ton, and honestly, it's it, it's expected. Be, and he's we're gonna see him on the big stage real soon. Like, we I say that with confidence. Like, from I, I, I don't know, I'm a fight junkie, I watch stuff all the time, I'm always tuning in. As you can see, I'm <laughs> up on a Sunday night, like, <laughs> listening, listening to Caveman's Corner. Shout out, you guys, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, and, like. From just what I'm seeing, like I, I don't know. I'm I'm no I'm no fight guru, like, but I, I like what I'm seeing. Yeah, we, <laughs> there's a yeah. lot of local guys coming up, man. Like you know, we got uh Pat, uh Pat Smith, uh Pat Mix. We got yep. Solomon Renfro coming out of here. Yes, uh, sir. We got the genius Anthony Romero coming from right upstairs in Canada. Like we got some big name guys on big name shows, just all out of the general area. So. It's coming, man. Our time I is here. I to let guys know that combat sports world is, like, a lot smaller than people realize. Like, we've got great coaching staff over at Empire. Like, you guys were talking about Robbie Lawler. Like, what is it? Our coaching staff comes from, like, a similar like similar gym, Millicent's Fighting Systems and stuff. Yeah. Chris Dog, Wally McDonald. Just, yeah. just great people. How, did it you watch that fight? I almost teared up when he won, dude. I, I was like, I've never seen him like, be emotional in the ring before. Dude, no. that was, that was so <laughs> yeah, that was – like yeah, I said, that was his last fight, fight, so he was. I'm yeah. sitting in bed watching, like just talking to my girl. I'm like, yo, like, you know, I wonder how Father Time is going to allow, allow this story to play out. Like, I'm sitting in bed, like, you know, usually expecting Father Time, like, most fighters go out on their back. And I'm like, okay, it's probably going to be a good back and forth fight. Nico Price is tough and stuff. But under a mi sub minute, I was, I was literally, I stood up. <laughs> I was stood up with my hands in there. I was like, he did it. He did Dude, it. Nico's tough, too. Like, I, I honestly thought Robbie was going to have a really hard time in that fight. I thought he might gas out. Like, I thought I was just so happy for him, man. I was walking into 7-Eleven getting my monsters. <laughs> Pat. Pat Monster, oh, right, God. Pat? And, uh, and uh, <laughs> I, was, like, I was like, I was like, I cheered in the middle of the store. And, like, I almost got teary-eyed at paying for my drinks. And people <laughs> are probably looking at you in the aisle. Yeah, was like, oh, I had the volume on, man. I don't know who I was watching. <laughs> They're like, who's this crazy man? Good like another homeless guy off the street. Hey Walker, so you think uh if you win this fight coming up, right? You you uh you wanna go for the title for the next fight? Bro, gold is always the goal. I got I got I'm on a mission for gold, eyes are always on the prize. Yep. But you start it, but for, I'll, I will say I'm not overlooking, I'm not overlooking my opponent. I, I never do that. Full respect to them, even like even gave like Oh, and I will say, I, I'll clear it up. It was not intentional for me to bump Gabe back in the back of the head during the weigh-ins. I even mentioned it to him right after it happened. It was it was just an intense moment, and neither one of us wanted to give an inch. And then, like, when they when we finally turned to face the camera, we didn't, like, turn and step. We He just kind of turned and put his arms up, so I did the same. And, like, you're talking about my reach. Like, <laughs> they <they're laughs> down to my knees. What am I going to do? Like, he just kind of tapped him on the way up. I didn't beat it. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> 
Ben talked about that a whole lot, so I'll make sure I let him know when, when I talk to Ben. Next <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, like, yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't want that to be in my reputation. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I, I ain't no jerk. I'm not trying to, like, nah, I'm just trying to fight, dog. <laughs> like, it's hard enough to get fights. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm a nice guy at heart, I swear. Uh, I like it. You seem like awesome, dude. I didn't know. Uh, yeah. I honestly, when you messaged in, I thought you might be a little bit wild because I, I thought you did that on purpose. And I was like, oh, man, he's going to talk some trash about Darth. This is going to be oh, great. No, no, you're no, too no. nice, man. Now, now we're not going to get no one to watch because you're going to be like, ah, it's going to be a respectful fight. And... Yeah, I got a yeah. mom and dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I, I don't know. I like to carry myself. Well, like. I'm no like John Jones goody two shoes like what is that? I'm, but I like I like to just be me and I always keep it real. But like I do like to I am a respectable individual. I like to carry myself with like a certain amount of like class. I'm not afraid to keep it real at the same time and mm -hmm. like in different ways. I will always respect like people. Like I will never just be rude or disrespectful just because not like well, I'm not above anyone. I always carry myself with respect and I always like imagine like treat everybody um how you how you want to be treated and stuff and always like how you want to be remembered too like i like I, I didn't say much like during the k4 show besides like you know <laughs> hopping around kicking screaming like you know putting on a show in fight mode but you know after i cooled down i was like dang i didn't even think nobody i was just in, I was just in go mode <laughs> so i got a question for this is like a kind of a serious question even though we've been uh joking around i had dennis on and we talked uh you know we talk religion and we talk like uh, a whole bunch of stuff about being a good person. Does uh, having someone like Dennis in your gym like rub off on you and really make you think about how you represent yourself? Oh, or is absolutely. this just something that comes natural to you guys? Because it kind of seems like almost everyone in front of your gym is like thoughtful in their manner that they present themselves in. What what what's the um phrase? A rising tide lifts all boats, and it's like yeah. if you have a like if you have a general good attitude, a great atmosphere, like that encourages like that that um where the good behavior like just begets each other and is amplified because of it it's just um there's nothing like it because honest like it makes you want to go back to that room you look forward you're never dreading a day like there's always going to be support people people are on the same page as you they have similar values to you so like but not even so what is it they don't even have to have similar values to you but they are willing to um speak with you and converse and you know um was and no one no one ever takes anything personal or there's never any like big disagreements or even if you do disagree about something it's like you're able to find the common ground of like you're able to we're, we're reasonable people martial arts brings out um great great aspects of that but also like our general lives like dennis is a is a pastor in his daily life and like he, you you guys know his story and what he's been through yeah for having sure. someone like him around like is he sets a great example as a friend as a as a father like um as a community leader like i i grew up in rochester he he transplanted um a few more than a few years ago now and he he's become a pillar like that i like look to and and am inspired by in my own community that i grew up in man that's awesome it's, it's so yeah. good to have that and like your story is what i want my gym to be like i want everyone to come in and be happy like i'm so proud of my guys even though they got beat up a little bit like they just decided to go try out for bare knuckle boxing and they went and did it today but it was crazy and uh, one of them took on a pro like my my little 15 year old kid like fought Bubba norton and uh, it, like i'm just proud of them guys man it's, it's cool it's cool to see hard is hard and the, well a lot of times like how i said the combat sports world is real small There's a lot of difference the only the main difference between like amateurs and pros is, is like just time like experience like yeah. as, as you can tell, like these days the amateur scene, a lot of these guys are getting a lot more skilled. Whether it be like whether they're just starting striking first, and or whether they're starting like whether they are fully transitioned into MMA, it's a lot higher level than, of course, like because of the evolution of the sport. Like that doesn't need to be said, but the expectation is almost um, far higher than it used to be, even at the lower levels. Like you, it's it's sharks and it's sharks everywhere now. You know. Man, like the, the uh, top guys in K4, except for the 765 guys and uh, Austin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. They're all better than uh, like I was when I first turned pro. Like the the level of MMA is so much different now. Oh yeah, like, it, it's so much better. Everyone is just good everywhere. Yeah, you like you look at you're inspired by fights like by performances like Volk and Yair and oh <laughs> man, Slug Volk's like so Daniel good and Jalen Turner last night. But, yeah. Like, and then like but i catch myself 
I'm doing cardio and I'm watching the old K4 fights. <laughs> That's good, man. That's like really, really like, good. Oh, let me look at the scene. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm more interested in these days. Like, you guys were breaking down the card. I'm like, yeah, I want to hear what they, they say about the team. Like, well, I'll tell you about Isaac as a heavyweight, man. Dude, dude's got power. Dude's got speed, too. Like, dude's got cardio. Like, he'll, he'll push. Like, whether this fight's a heavyweight fight that ends in the first round or even, if, like, we all don't know. I'll be the first to say most people don't want to see a heavyweight decision. But even if it goes to a decision with him, this is going to be exciting all the way through. Do not get it twisted. Um, that's good to see, man. Uh, and we'll be calling it, so it's exciting for us. Like, uh, the less we have to talk, the better. Man. We don't want Ray explaining them to, like, how do you do a check? Bro, it's going to be a whole check, lot of eyes and screaming during that fight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, oh, my God. Is the cage going to hold up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a real thing. Keith just got that cage, man. I, I hope it's still under warranty. Like, uh, shout out, also, yeah, shout out Keith. Shout out you guys for putting together this the this show and this production. Like I said in, in my post that post victory post, I was like, yo, this is like a really good show. Like you, we've been around to like a couple different cards as a team and stuff. Like my coaches, they they have like a sort of uh, standard that they like um, these amateur shows to have, even like that we're gonna perform for. And that we're going to be insured by, and he and he has full faith in you guys, you know. And that's after awesome. being the production after being a part of it behind the scenes and everything, I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to fight for you guys again. You're like <laughs> top choice, like you know, I want to, I want to be there. I see that belt, I want that belt. It's a nice looking one, <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to get too ahead of myself. Like I said, I got a fight coming up. Dylan Tharp's a tough, tough kid. Doesn't give up on himself, you know. But I liked. Uh, I, I never even got to ask you guys. Did you guys ever watch, like, my fights before my fight with Gabe? I watched one of your fights there. I didn't see too many of them online, so I only seen one. Yeah, so, the, like, it, like, I know you guys, yeah. It was my first K4 fight, my first Muay Thai fight. I had, like, what, two K1 fights before? Yeah. I like, I like Muay Thai because it's, like, I like the clinch aspect of it. Um, cause it's I, hard to find, uh, it's hard to find full Muay Thai shows, and I'm, Man, I love – me and Keith came out through Muay Thai together, and we both love the sport so much. And uh, we both love the clinch, you know. And yeah. I'm so excited that K4 has real Muay Thai, and it's so great. I hate K1. No yeah, offense like, to K1 fighters. I've had <laughs> K1 too, but I hate it. You want to be able to, like, fully utilize, like, your skills, fully fully utilize this, the clinch. It's, but, like, you don't want to be um, neutered in any kind of way. Like, yeah. a lot of people come – like, I'm a fan of boxing, too, but uh, I understand, like, how MMA fans can be, like, well, I don't like boxing, it's neutered, like, mm -hmm. but it's, like, if you understand boxing, like, you understand the nuances and, like, what makes it good and, like, you appreciate it as an art as in itself. And so so it's, like, you know, every, to, to each his own, but um, each has its advantages as well. Yeah, boxing is beautiful. It's so artful. Like, it's artful and it's violent and it's it's everything that's that's fun to watch. I love boxing. Uh, it's just different. Like you only have two weapons, so you have to be so skillful with them. And, and man, like finding those holes is so different. Yeah, that. and that the movement is just it's beautiful to watch how fast and how athletic the, the guys are to box. And then you see those those brutish MMA guys with flat feet just coming out, and it's so different. Like, dude, yeah. it's, it's such a different <laughs> show. Like, I, I got into this. I got into um, combat sports. Like. Be, from seeing like the M recent MMA fighters, I was just like, it's not a tough man's. Well, it is a tough man's sport. I was like, but if you're smart, you should be able to win. I was like, I got into the sport not because I was, I thought I was tougher. I was like, I because I thought I could like figure out a way to beat anyone in any given amount of time that and any time that I'm allotted. So it seems like you watch, uh, you scout a lot yourself. Did you see the Dylan Tharp Isaiah cat fight? So I. <laughs> I so here's the thing. Um, I watched it prior to like being matched up with him. I didn't like think too much of it, but like I watched it kind of back like now being matched up, and it's weird. Like I watch it less intent. Like I don't know. I watch it less intently because it's like I know know thy enemy and know thyself, but it's like don't over obsess about thy enemy because then you will will not know thyself. Because mm. so it's like I like how guys always say like. Oh, I don't watch tape. I'm only focused on doing what, I'm, what I want to do. It's like, well, you know, I, I am focused on doing what I want to do. And I want to emphasize what I want to do in, like, the best ways possible. I don't necessarily look for, oh, like, the slightest minute detail. But it's like, 
I mean, you know, watch tape, I, you know, how detailed and how deep you want to, you know, discuss stuff with your coaches. Like, I'm very involved. My coach, Wally, <laughs> I'm, I'm notorious for keeping him held, held back after classes, just asking him stuff after sparring, after what he saw the weekend, what he thinks about some technique he's been teaching us in class. I would apply it in some different way. He's like, dude, I got kids. <laughs> my, wife, my wife's waiting on me. <laughs> I got to get home. I'm like, okay. You're that on. guy. I have like three of you guys in my gym, and they're hard to get out of the building. I'm like, dog, it's 10 30. Dog, it's 11 o'clock. Man, I got to get home, dude. I'm not going to have a home to go back to. It's, it's, oh. <laughs> it's like, you guys. Bad habits are hard to break. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to just ask who do you think won that fight? Uh, so that's a tough one because it's like. <laughs> so, like, I really got you on the spot because. If you beat Tharp, hopefully you fight Isaiah next. So either way, I'm going to play this. And then, like, one of them's not going to be happy with you. <laughs> Man, again, what is it? Uh, I'm, I'm a cop out. What is it? Tyler, yes. that fight didn't even matter because uh, Cat wound up fighting my, my boy Tyler Langley. Tyler had that boy, had, had my man leaning. And Tyler had Isaiah leaning over in March like crazy. Yeah. Rounds, unfortunately. You know, the fights <laughs> happen the way they do. Ty's building back up again. You know, full shout yeah. out to the boy. And, and shout out to Ket too. You know, he's yet he had a good show in in April. You he know, dug deep man, he I, dug deep. I was there. I was there for the Gladius card. I saw what happened. It was, you know, like Isaiah's tough. You know, he'll never quote on himself. I I feel like I I feel like I've never spoken to him, but I feel like yeah. that's one thing from what I've seen in his fight style, he gets hit and like he kind of revs him up just a little bit. You know, like if you yeah. think you almost got him, but um. But in terms Our, of him, Tharp, uh, it, yeah, like the fight didn't matter because I, it, they both, I feel like they both learned the lessons they needed to, irregardless of the decision. Because, like you guys said, it is so close. It could have been majority. Said, it could have been a draw. Like one of those rounds is yeah. almost like dead. Like I don't. I'm not saying normalized draws or normalized 10, 10 rounds, but like, or people who have been like, oh, or 10, 9 must system. That's a boxing thing. Also going back to boxing. <laughs> Like yeah. I've, 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 man, I try to even think about different ways to score MMA or, um, or kickboxing, like as to not be ten nines, but almost like, it almost like if you scored something like out of a fifty fifth, like started everything at mm -hmm. a 50, 50 and you like rated it, like who, oh maybe in a really close round this person had a fifty one versus forty nine, like you know this kind of thing and overall seems score, like, like, seems like you know like, uh, stuff. <laughs> like not to cut you off, but it seems like uh, sweeps are weighed really heavily by the K four judges. Yeah. Um, but then who you like they don't pick the judges. Like the the commission comes in and the judges come in from the commission. So like you have totally different judges every show. Like mm -hmm. but the the last like the last couple of shows, it seems like in my my professional opinion, it seems like sweeps are scoring very highly. Um because like, it's like proper more really time, it's like you know, balance, like you don't wanna be shown like in a state of weakness on your back or even like with your opponent yeah. behind back to her and running away it's like someone can get you like you know back to the basics of muay thai like being balanced yeah, someone can get yeah you being balanced though, that's, that's rule number one mm -hmm. if someone can get you off of your balance it's a sign of like them being better at muay thai than you you know so it's all right so can... we're gonna let you cop out of this one you just said whatever <laughs> uh, no i mean like whoever I'm, won won in increments i haven't like watched it like just put it on and watched it like straight through like i I'm the type to like maybe pause it or rewind. Like, did I see something? Like, like I said, it depends on how detailed. Because some things you notice, some things you don't. Some things you notice on a different time through. Some things. Because like, one time I watched it, I watched like let's say I watched it twice. One time I watched it, I gave it to Dylan. The other time I watched it, I gave it to Ket. It's literally a toss up. It could be a draw. It's tough for us too because we're commentating when we watch it. But I watched it a few times now. Um, I like Isaiah a lot. I like Dylan a lot, dude. I love that Dylan's mom comes to the fights and like, do like. It's so cool to watch his family. Like I love, I like like both guys. But I, in my opinion, I thought Isaiah won that fight. Um, but yeah. like, I, like I said, it's close enough to go either way. And uh, on a real note, like you said, I, I like these amateur shows because it's like their support. It's not just fight fans, but it's like people that are fans of the fighters that you yeah. Know, yeah they paid the money, they took the Saturday night, and they're coming to watch us. And so it's like. You know, shout out to Dil shout out to even you know to Dylan's mom. You know, she's a supporter of all that we're doing. She's you know, I I wouldn't have an opponent if not for her. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like, yeah I, I love like I said, I have too. no animosity. I have no like disrespect to these people. Like you know, I I literally just want to go in there, ha have a good time, want to fight. You know, like I I have stuff, I have goals that I set for myself. They have goals for that they set for themselves. 
things happen, people meet, things things don't go as planned, things go as planned for whoever, you know? Yeah, and that, that's great to, to build a brand. Uh, like K4, like we can build local guys again, just like TNT used to. Like TNT and, and the day I used to work with Don Lilly and they launched Pat Mix and Solomon Renfro, you know? Like K4 is going to launch a bunch of people too. And hey, like, I'm just happy to be part of it. What's that? What? Don't forget, don't forget me. What's Ooh. the one girl in the UFC <laughs> right now that fought in uh contact? Uh, Jasmine Jazz the something, something. I think she was. Yeah. I don't remember where she's from, but I I remember I was looking through some full contact fights and I saw that one had like forty nine k views as opposed to all the others. I was like, oh yeah, no wonder she's in the UFC now. Yeah. But, like I said, small world. Yeah, I called a fight for FCP with uh um. Uh, Barry and uh, Thug Rose too. Like I called fights with both of those for uh, FCP nice. too. And man, they they put on some good shows there too. I love Mahmood. Uh, hopefully Mahmood and me we can work together a little bit more and uh, promote them a little bit too. Um, Heck yeah. And speak. Yeah. Speaking of the speaking of promoting, I'm gonna bring it back to the card. I'm gonna, just to shout out more of my Empire teammates. Use. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take a shot at his name. Uh, Bajo Beer versus my man Garrett Hughes. You know, Garrett had his debut the last time out. If y'all, if you guys have a good chance to talk to Garrett, he's he's a cool guy too. Take advantage of that. Um, but he Garrett's Garrett's good good in the stand up. He he was struggling a little bit as you guys probably saw with yeah. the, uh, the sweeps adjustment in the uh at the latter half of his first fight. But you know, just first fight probably like I I I'm not in his head. But from what I know about Garrett, dude's got the tools to go out there and win a fight. So I know he's gonna go out there. He's got he's got his first fight jitters out the way, whether or not it was jitters, and he's just and like I said, from what I know, he's gonna go out there and go to work. How do you say that guy's name? I know he's from like I used to. We were at the same gym. I don't even know how to say his name. Was it? Uh, I just looked at the poster. I was like Abajo beer. That's what I assume. Yeah, if I, Abajo beer. Name, if I butcher the name, I'm sorry. Like <laughs> yeah, I'm too. Weird. I'm but still butchering. I'm gonna try to give you some shine. Because, like, yeah, you know, I'd be saying this to a lot of people. What is it? Um, it, they may be WNY MMA, but it's like a lot of people consider Re uh, Rochester what upstate New York when they talk about, like, oh, where is Rochester in terms of New York State? But I kind of mm -hmm. consider Rochester more like um, Western New York than it, like, because you know, we're right near Canada almost, and yeah, uh, for sure. And I so, like, when people say Western New York, like, I almost think, like, you know, we're all in it kind of together. Yeah, we got to fight each other on the scene. Like, like you said, like we were talking about coming up, but it's like everyone's got dreams. Everyone's got goals. Like you were talking about Solomon run for Apache makes. I don't like I don't know who they who they fought like on the mm -hmm. way up or if they or I don't know if those guys had any connection or any overlap with guys that we would have fought. But like like you said, like, you know, you got to fight on the re on the amateur to the regional and eventually make it to, the, to that world stage. That's for sure. And we yeah. do it through each other, too. Um, like, we do it by building promotion. That's really, really good. Mm -hmm. Bringing in good yep. people and putting on great fights. And that's that's what our goal is in the community, and, you know? And besides me from Empire, that's on the card. We got my man Exxon Dervisholi, whose poster was had dropped to the other day. And, man, Exxon's, Exxon's a monster. <laughs> Exxon's <laughs> just a, physically a monster. Like, you guys might see him just, like, and be like, he's a middleweight? <laughs> like, and, yes, he is a middleweight. He looks like a light heavyweight. <laughs> Probably walking around dang near heavyweight. He does. He looks very Russian, actually. <laughs> looking at this poster. What is it? Um, he's Kosovian. Shout out Kosovo. What is it? Damn. Oh yeah, tough guys over there. Yeah, they built different. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, mm. Trust me, was it? I I I spar like I said, I spar Exxon. I do conditioning with him. Dude's a machine. <laughs> Dude, I. I like I said, I, I think I have good pace and stuff. We talked about Dennis earlier. Dude is a machine. Like you think you think Drago had a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and he's fighting a uh, WNY guy too, huh? Yep. So I so like I said, it may be WNY and Buff, like basically Buff versus Rock, but you know. He's fighting Malik. Uh what is it? Yeah, I watched I think I yeah, I took Oh uh, yeah, I did glance over one of his fights because I was watching um it was on one on a card with uh Dylan's first fight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh I sparred Malik a couple times when he was really, really green. So like I like Malik a little bit. And uh my uh one of my uh students and he trains at WNY two, Derek Patterson, who also has another awesome knockout in K four. Uh he's on the pro scene now, but uh he uh he trains with Malik all the time and uh they get some rounds in. So it's cool to see like all these guys coming up. I'm excited to see that match 
Anyone yeah, that looks Russian, they're a good accredited well. gym. Like I said, I will never take nothing away from from no, any opponent because it's like we I we got to get up for these fights too. Like I want to wake up. I want to have be a fire. I want to have a good fight. I want to wake up and you know think that like I got a good challenge to face. Like I want to test myself. I want to push myself. I want to be the best version of myself. Like um, who are you waking up and getting those extra runs if you're thinking like oh. This is about to be an easy. This is about to be an easy fight. I don't got to do it. I can have cookies tonight. Are you thinking like, yo, like I want to make sure my defense is on point. I want to make sure my strike is on point. I want to make sure my clinch is on point. I want to make sure, like, you want to make sure I'm on point for this fight because it's like, and I'm gonna eat cookies tonight. <laughs> nah, no cookies. <laughs> Ray's eating the cookies. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. No cookies. Yeah. <laughs> no cookies tonight. <laughs> yeah. I gotta wait to cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. This will cut some weight and make you shit. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. If I if I ever brought that in the gym, I oh, my God. Coach Chris. I love Coach Chris. He's my fa he's our favorite. He's he's um he's just been he's been around me. He's been around the block. He's just the OG of the of the fight game. <laughs> Super knowledgeable. And if he saw you with that in the gym, he would he would just get real close up to you and just get real quiet. Get that shit out of my gym right <laughs> the fuck now. Oh man, <laughs> I drink like ten of these a day. Oh, that for you, Dave, man. Like, why, I don't see how you're not jumping up after how, how you're not jumping into the cage after Nat. Nat, <laughs> Nat, Nat I did. I jumped in. I interviewed him. <laughs> <laughs> I get no, to go in there and talk shit. That's true. A triple front flipped into there after ten. <laughs> well, well, hopefully I'll be in there to interview you again too, man. Like it's it's really fun going in there. Like. uh like you guys, it's so it's such a cool experience to be in there with you, you know, like uh, celebrating the wins, and then uh, sometimes I get to talk to the losers too, and like I just like man, it's like I love this to just tell you guys great show, you know, like you don't want to like talk to someone after they lost, but like oh, sometimes yeah. you just have to be like, man, that was awesome, dude. Like don't keep your head up. But you know? yeah, fight nut. I was you guys, I was waiting for you guys to even announce um what uh Gabe's Gabe's new fight. I got to go watch uh his. His new point, I get because I want to. Yeah, know. he's I, uh, Gabe Vegas like, taking on right. Sage Montgomery. I uh, I just spar with Sage um, last week Saturday. Uh, they came in and they did some sparring with us. I spar with uh, all the Booma guys that are fighting soon, and um, got some good rounds in with them guys. And uh, man, Sage looks uh, Sage got uh, got his work cut out for him. Like Vegas going to be coming back tough, man. After you, yeah. And uh, like I, I like try to emulate uh, Gabe a little bit. Like it's a little bit tough for me because I'm a lot taller than than him. But um, we're chatting it up for a scrap. And um, yeah, like what, like, like how I said, um, I know you guys uh, interviewed Gabe before our fight. And yeah. how I said, like I don't too much into stuff. Like what I tuned in like a little bit, but I was like, I'm not trying to get to know the dude. I got like you know, I'm like I'm like I, yeah, I, I do this right now. But um, but I did, went back a little bit and, like because when I was there with him, he like dude was tough. I was like, oh, like right um, he, while watching it, there like and that's what I mean about nuances. I don't know if like people can in full speed like realize like at most of the time instances where I was like hitting him where he was like walking like walk back and stuff. But like when I would hit him, like say with the right hand, like right off rip it, um, like what he blitzed me with the click kick or something. I just cracked him right away and. I felt it, I, and I kind of like felt his head, and I was like, "Oh, this dude's gonna—he might be a little hard, hard to put away in terms of like, punt, like trying to get him out of there up top." Like, I yeah, felt, and he went right to the body, dude. That's smart. Yeah, like, oh, dude, play football. It's like, oh, he's used to contact. No, because <laughs> rugby a little bit. So I was like, oh, okay, like I, it would make sense. Like, so how I, you know, you kind of understand people's energy while you're in there because we yeah. we threw at each other, and then like we almost like stepped back because. Like I said, I landed on him good, and, and I almost like caught his eyes, and we just both like just darted back in because, like you knew from the face off, neither of us wanted to give an inch. Yeah, for sure. I thought that was gonna be a great fight, man. Uh, I didn't know I didn't know too much about you, and I knew that Gabe had that big knockout, and I almost feel bad for you. I feel like I kind of jinxed Gabe. I was like, man, I Gabe's gonna go in there. He's got that big overhand, lots of power. And uh, he's like, no, I'm a student of the game. Like, I hope I didn't, like, change his game plan, like, get in his head and, like, blow it up a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> uh, was, I didn't read too much of it. I know I got it. I was just, I was, um, I was hamming it up a little bit for the rear out. I know you got, but because what is it? Because, yeah, credit to him. He got a 22-second knockout. What is it? I got a big, 
you know, big up our own victories and stuff. But, but um, mm-hmm. he, like I said, he was a tough opponent. And I don't want it being, I don't want people going back and thinking, oh. Uh oh. Bad service. <laughs> Verizon called him for his bill. <laughs> oh, damn. You uh, mean sorry, Nick. That was just a joke, Don. Yeah. Uh, I think we lost Nick, man. Uh. Wait. We lost him like we lost Shamrock. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. Uh, all right, I'm going to – um, we'll take him out. That was Nick Walker, folks. Um, he's fighting on K4 card. Um, if we get him back, we'll have him back in, but we're we're going to get off the air soon. Uh, it was great to have him in, man. Like, it was awesome. Like, and you guys on K4, if we're ever doing a podcast and we don't have a guest, Man, feel free to chime in the comments. Yeah. We'll, we'll pop you up in on here. Uh, we got a lot of love for K4 guys. If you got any any local fighter, if you uh you want to message us and jump on in, like always feel free. We'll always make some time. Oh yeah, we put you in here. Yeah, me and K Man is fighters friendly. <laughs> most fighters. Yeah, most fighters. Yeah. It's cool to have him on. I, he's we got to put him in the pool for a hundred bucks now. Yeah. I'll look. Oh, oh, I think he's back. Oh, he's back. Hey, he's back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> My fault. My fault. We were just saying that uh, it was Verizon call and asked for his bill. Uh, uh, I don't want to say that behind your back, so I gotta, I gotta say it while you're here, dude. Like I would, I would say that if you were here or not. So I just want to make sure I say it to your face. No, that's all good. But yeah, I think I was saying something about. Uh, um, yeah, I want to big up our victories, but yeah, he was a tough dude, respectable, respectable kid. But um, yeah, when it came to, but yeah, like I said, when it comes to the fight, it's just business is business. I, I don't, like I said, I don't dislike him. I never bumped him on purpose. I immediately apologized right after. He apologized to him and his girl because I'm like, yo, that's not how we carry ourselves. That's not how I. Because like I said, I want to re- represent myself, represent um, my gym, my family, my parents, like all that stuff. Like I came from a good home. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, like I was saying, Sage Montgomery is going to be fighting uh, Gabe Vega, uh, Booma guy versus Gabe. That's going to be a great fight. Oh, Puma, um, yet, Keith I mean, don't give none of his guys easy fights. I feel sorry for the Booma guys, man. They always get like they get some tough ass dudes. Why I like K four and like some of these more more recent amateur shows is because it's like you got shows where guys are fighting amateur title fights and got. I don't want to sound disparaging, but like they don't have the best records. Like whether it be they're going off multiple losses, knock knockout stop or stoppage losses, and they're getting thrown in title fights. Whether it be like a mismatch or just like both guys that don't have the best of like whether it be guys that are available that could fight for that title, and like these guys get that title and they're they're able to like say hold it up and kind of say like hey hey I'm the best around and it's like just I mean. Respect, you got the title and stuff, but it's like the other guys that are good that are in also in place to fight for those. They're like, they're quick to be like, hey, I, I got something to say about that, man. Like, you got to come see me. Like, I want to see you about that. Yeah, man. You Everybody know, uh, be a 765. <laughs> <laughs> yo, stop. I was, yo, honestly, that, I think that beef <laughs> you had with them is almost what drew me more into. Like, like I need, I need to be watching this show a little bit. I need, I need to f- figure out what all this drama is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the beef is to this day. Deontay Wilder, to this day. I don't know. It's funny because it started out, I had one of their guys at my gym to come train. I had them over at my place to, uh, like, work out for the uh, the couple shows ago. And uh, I don't know how it turned into this thing. And all of a sudden, Ray turned into heel. One day, Ray's like, watch this, K-Man. I'm going to be the bad guy commentator. And all of a sudden, man, it was on. Man, you could be a bad guy commentator. I'll be a bad guy fighter because <laughs> every fight – I've been feeling my villain art. <laughs> Yo, but, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say earlier Um, before I got disconnected. I never felt disrespected or I never felt uh, by you saying, like, oh, he's the KO king. But like, I know I handed up while I was on the mic, but it was – um, but, uh, a lot of – I don't think guys like my kind of build or even like me, myself, I don't I don't think I get underestimated at all. I, at least I hope not. I mean, God forbid I do. Like I mean, at your own job. risk. <laughs> underestimate me at your own risk. <laughs> but I, or do I mean make my life a little bit easier? <laughs> I'm, no offense, dude, but you're like too big and too dark to be underestimated, man. You're a scary uh, dude. 
<laughs> yeah, man. Uh, was you like John think, Jones, man. <laughs> that face off with Gabe, like I'm not. I, like I said, I'm not a crazy rah rah. I don't need to talk a lot. Like I don't even try to intimidate guys in the face off. I just kind of stand ten toes down. Like I'm, I'm unfazed. Like yo, I'm here. Yeah. Like. I, I'm not here by accident. Like I planned for this. Like mm-hmm. I trained for this. Like I, I expected this. I like I wanted victory. It was like I I, I trained hard because I wanted it. Yeah. I didn't do this on accident. Like kind of like oh like let's see where the chips fall where they may. Like I want the chips to land a certain way. <laughs> you smart man. You smart. You you strong mentally. You know you don't let stuff like that distract you. You did for mm-hmm. business. You did a you know to get that W. So. Cause it's like, yeah, it's like the goal is the same irregardless of right. if one person, like, honestly, like, and that's why, um, a lot of guys during the COVID thing with the UFC apex, they're like, Oh, I kind of need a crowd. It's like, bro, I will fight you the same <laughs> in front right. of nobody as in front of 20 K people. I'll fight you the same. If I'm not getting paid for it as to if a certain amount of money is on the line, dang, I shouldn't have said that because for future, <laughs> my, they might pull this out and be like, yo, I mean, we got them. Don't pay yeah. nothing. I got him. I'll breathe this part out somehow. <laughs> <laughs> dang, dang, you got like, it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, like, but or or I don't got to dislike or like anyone. Like I, I even told that to like one of my opponents. I was like, yo, I, I don't gotta like or dislike anyone to fight them any harder. Like I want to win. Like <laughs> I'm like I, uh, a little insight as a, a kind of competitor. I'm not. I'm not someone who like wants to gloat about the victory, but God dang, yeah, I I, I hate losing. <laughs> I do not want anyone to be able to like. I I had w- one of my best friends like growing up, like if I say if we ran a hundred meters and I beat him, I'd be like, oh yeah, you know, good race, good go, man. You know, you'll get him next time or something. If he won, jumping up and down, oh, you suck. You need to, <laughs> you should stop running. You should just grab a walker for the rest of your life because. You just never play it, and I was like, just that just burned me. Like, so I'm like, nope, not losing, not doing that no more. <laughs> <laughs> and Man, then the fighting stuff, it's like you can't take this back. It's like, like what is it? Um, like, yeah, we train for a certain moment, and that's why I, I do feel bad for people that whether it be because, like, a record or, or like even the outcome of a fight, it's almost like reading the front and end cover of a book without like reading like the meat and the ending of it without reading like the meat inside, like. You don't like a unanimous decision. You don't know if it was a hard fought one. You don't know if it was a breeze, like a one one sided domination. You don't know if like it was just super close. Like dude just barely inched out the rounds, barely like, bleeding from from both his eyes and ears. You know, <laughs> missing teeth. Like you know, you like that's why I said like I'm a fight fanatic. I like to like watch the fights because it's like a story in itself. I love the fights too. And just to just to uh, take a little bit of the bad guy shine off of Ray. Ray uh Ray sold some tickets for the fight and then he gave it to the seven six five guys two yeah. ticket sale money. So like he's a big soft at heart. So like um <laughs> like I, I, I didn't want to tell the story before the fight, but now that the fights are over and there's some six five guys aren't really on the card, I can uh, spill the beans a little bit. So Ray's like uh Ray's a good guy deep down inside, even though like he got really mad when that uh the Whoever the loading, loading, loading guy was talking some shit though. Remember that guy said he was gonna smack you? That was the only time I seen Ray actually really mad at them guys. Oh All the rest of the stuff was just jokes until then. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, like I'm not even, I don't really post a lot on social media. I just kind of like, I'm just kind of reserved to like, yo, not even like business promos. Like, you, you get to know me. Like, you, you'll not, like, don't try to base me off of like an internet profile that like you can see. Like, you, like Instagram is one way for everybody, Facebook is like, Everyone can share an opinion on Facebook or something, but it's like, but you're not really like having the back and forth conversation, you know? So it's like, so you only get so much. And so I'm like, uh, if people want to meet me, they can meet me. <laughs> or like, I'll, can I'll, watch I'll, this. I'll, I'll, yeah, or they'll watch this and, or, I'll speak, or I'll speak to them like in person or something. But it's like, I'm not one of those guys where I'm constantly like, shit. Like, like, you know. I'll share like my family's business, like the Livy's Jamaican restaurant. Like I'm, I'll share stuff I want to get the word out about. You know, like I'll share stuff that I want people to see. Like I don't, I'm not just if something if a meme's really funny or something crazy. Like if it, maybe you gotta throw it up. But it's like for the most part, I try to like, hey, it, like you know, if you're gonna click on Nicholas Walker the page or something and scroll, I want you to like, hey, I want you to see stuff that you might be interested in. Your family Listen. has a restaurant. 
I got, I got a, I, he posted it on, on Facebook. I got when I go to Rochester, I'm gonna definitely check it out, man. I, wa- I walked out, with check it out so that I would live forever. So that I, I want would that live jerk that chicken, shirt. yeah. I want that hey, jerk uh, chicken, beef patty. <laughs> send, send Ray, are you friends with Ray on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. send Ray the link to uh, the link or like a page, and then I'll link it into the description of this. So then, uh, like we'll give them, uh, like if they click on this to watch you, they can just click and see the restaurant too. Yes, sir. The restaurant for anyone interested, it is here in Rochester, New York, Libby's Jamaican Restaurant and Import Market at 1583 Howard Road in Westgate Plaza. And that's just a quick plug for them. Shameless. I did walk in, was it? Uh, I walked out in the Libby's shirt and my 10th Planet Empire Academy sweatpants. <laughs> But because I was asking my parents if we had a hat before, <laughs> he got the boss. I was asking if we had a hat before for the Empire shirt, but I really wanted to show off the restaurant because it's like, like I said, I come from a good home. My parents have given me a lot. Like, like I, I'm the person I am today because of the um, the village that helped raise me. Next time, uh, next time I'll be in Rochester for the fights, so I'll come up a little bit early and I'll try and grab some food up there. Yeah, I, heck, they we, they might even cater. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Like I'd love to, uh, man. I'd love to uh, to support all the fighters any way that we can, and uh, hopefully we can give you the hundred bucks so that we put on a good show. You know what I mean? Hey, uh, I mean, it's gonna be a good one. What, like I said, Dylan's got a good style. I never even said nothing really about him. He's got a good style, Dylan. If you're watching this, if you tuned in, I know you're probably not. Probably couldn't give. <laughs> you probably couldn't give two 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 dangs about this. But um, yeah, he didn't pay his Verizon bill. He can't get on and watch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is it? It's gonna be a good one. I, like, if you, the more you guys watching me, I, the more you guys are gonna understand my style. I like to fight, all action. I like to push the pace. I like to, I like to get in there. You know, I, um, martial arts. It's like I'm. Not, I don't care really to, or it is an expression of yourself. It is art. Like, I'm not gonna go as far as to say, oh, I'm making art right now. Like. This is me who I am in this moment. Like, bro, I'm trying to win a fight. Like, <laughs> like I'm trying not to get punched, punched, punched in the face. I'm trying not to get kicked in the head. Like, I'm trying to do all the damage and not take any. Like, and and so, um, you know, good luck to you. Good luck to everyone that watches. Th- or thank you to everyone who's gonna come out and part with their hard-earned money. Or when you're par- when you're using uh, when you're buying tickets online, use that promo code Walker. <laughs> nice. your boy, hey, your boy might have a future in this caveman. I'm just playing. You got a long way to go, dude. You should be like the whole time uh, promo code Nick Walker. Like, <laughs> hey, hey, I'm trying. Hey, you gotta you gotta you gotta visualize where you want to be, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. I like to put on good shows, like. I tr- we train hard and we want we want to put on good fights. We want to put on good shows. I want you guys to want to watch me fight. Like it's how we're gonna make our money. Man, I was so impressed. I I will be turning into every fight of yours that I can possibly watch. Yes, uh, if you got a streaming site, like send them to me. I will put your name in and I will watch the stream and stuff. I want to support you guys as much as I yep. can. Anyone that comes to K four and puts on a show like you do, like for real, man. That that was a good show and uh, yeah. you're a really tough guy. Uh, you're walk, you're walk, I'm a big fan, bro. I'm a big I fan of yours. That. I like your style. You hit hard. You, you know, you got the long reach. You know what I mean? I, I like your style, brother. I didn't get to say it in my K4 interview because, like I said, I was all hyped up. Thank you to my to my girl, Kane. Thank you to my friends and family. Thank you to my teammates, my, my coaching staff. Thank you to everybody. Anybody who's watching this right now, thank you. Thank you, everybody who tunes in in the future. And I, this is what I did say at the, in my last K interview. In my last K4 interview, I'm coming back to get them god dang dubs. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you, Nick. Uh, send that stuff to Ray, and then we'll post it in the link when I post this interview tomorrow. Yes, sir. All right. We're live now, so everyone can watch it, but we repost it later. All right. All right Have a great night, man. Take it easy, guys. Thank you. Man, uh, Nick Walker jumped in. That's awesome. Yeah, I got a, I got a uh when I go to Rochester, I gotta try that Jamaican restaurant for real. Yeah, so for real, when he um when he sends you that link, and then I'll put it in the tag like I did for all the stuff for Josh Barnett when I had Josh Barnett on. And then we got one more fight. We got Mackenzie McGrove. She's been trying to get on this card for like fucking ever. Like every fight she's trying to get on there. She's fighting uh uh man, she's fighting Emily La- Laquita from SGP Fight Club. I'm sorry if I killed your name. Um, 
That girl looks bad, but like uh, looking at her picture right now, like uh, that looks like it's gonna be a trust and fight. Um, if I knew I was gonna have Nick on, I would have had his poster ready to pop up like we did the fight uh, with with Josh and Bubba. But um, we'll do better. With, I, I, I'm learning how to use the software a little bit, so we'll we'll have better uh, better ads and stuff too. And we put the poster up, and we'll put the the scroll on the bottom for the fighters. Um, one more time, if you guys are buying your K4 tickets. Uh, you can use promo code Walker and then he'll get credit for the tickets. And that's the only way the amateur fighters make money unless they win the caveman's corner award and they get the hundred bucks from us. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, any other fight news going on in your life, Ray? Uh, no. Nah. I heard they asked you to uh, try out for bare knuckle boxing. <laughs> oh, that cave. <laughs> huh? You're not down with the OPP or what? Nah, I'm done. I'm so done. That makes me sad, Ray. <laughs> oh, you know I'm who's sorry. watching? Uh, uh, Jacob Nathari was watching. I wonder if he, uh, I wonder when he liked it. Probably when we were talking about something. <laughs> five. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, I seen that. I seen that. Yeah, I'm just playing, man. I don't really dislike them. I was, like, super mad about the shit that they said about um, Ray Cart's grandma or mom or whatever. But Yeah. Uh, when they took that down, like, I felt better about them as people. I was I was really hot that night, and uh, I, I said some mean things that I probably should take back, but I'm not going to. Um, I don't know. I don't hey, like that. Said, ever said. Some people say bad stuff. They don't take it back, so yeah. You well, can't take it back once you say it, but like, you can't say shit about people's family, man. Like, I don't right, right, that. right, right, all right, 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 right. You know, like I would never say no shit about your family. I would just make fun of you and how bad yeah. you are. Like, just make fun of me. Yeah, um, like, like you don't cross certain lines unless you're actually doing. Like, if you're banging your girl, be like, I'm banging your girl. Like, you could say that, I guess, but like, you shouldn't never <laughs> talk about mom. <laughs> But you can't say it if you're not doing it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be really doing it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can't, you can't like say you're banging some girl like that. You can't do shit like that. Yeah. If you're doing it, you gotta do it. You just be about yeah. it. Um, any word on uh, future guests? Uh, I'll reschedule uh, Frank Shamrock's. Um, and then uh, I'm working on a. Uh, I got to figure a time for Mark Coleman. Well, um, I want to do the Hamros one. Any any headway on our man Aaron Howard? Uh, I sent them. Uh, I I sent them a friend request on Facebook. So yeah. Uh, so I gotta check on that, and then I might have to send them a message on Facebook too. Yeah, Harold Howard you is. If you don't accept my friend request. <laughs> yeah, Harold Howard is my uh, guy. One on more than anyone else. Ole could be pretty good too, though. The first tough. Oh, 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 yeah, Ole. Oh, I gotta set up a time for that. He's down for that. Um, and then, K man, we gotta talk about um, uh, uh, um, fans that wanna, you know, be a little of uh, ten minutes of uh, a host for ten minutes or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll set that up. We can do that too. We can we can do the uh, Patreon, and then we'll uh, you can do the Patreon. You can come on the show for ten minutes and be a host. Yeah, Ed Rogers would definitely be the first one, I guess. Yeah. We get him on. Yeah, Ed Rogers gave us enough stars that he can uh, he can come on anytime he wants. <laughs> and then uh, after this, I'm gonna set up a message with you and him. I'll, I'll send you guys both the schedule, and we okay. can work out when you guys want to come in and come in do a class and stuff. Okay. It'd be great to have you both in, man. The room needs some more big guys. I got your cousin is a giant motherfucker, dude. He is so big and strong. He needs some more big guys. I was rolling him like for I don't know a long time today, and he's a big dude. Like I'm sore today. He's good. He go whoop my ass, came man. My little cousin go whoop my. <laughs> my little cousin go whoop my ass. Now, if you wear that stinky ass shirt, you haven't washed since we rolled like ten years ago. <laughs> Oh, he's, man, he's getting good though, dude. Like I showed him the secret of passing today. Like it's not gonna be so easy to recover guard on him now. Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. You I want to see him. I would like to see him compete. 
Yeah. In a tournament or something. I think he's going to do the classic in uh, September or whatever the Buffalo, whatever the Riverwork show is in September. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll be uh, – we've got to have Ketri on again to talk about that or uh, Catillus or whoever's going to okay. run the show. We'll get uh, someone on to talk about that show. Um, what else is going on? I think that's it. Uh, Catlin, uh, Baby Stan wants to come on. The Catlin Phillips girl wants to come on. And uh, uh, let me look at my messages real quick because I want to talk about this on air. Uh, uh, that uh, this guy, uh, this is Andrew, my new opponent. What about tomorrow night? Uh, this guy's trying to set it up for tomorrow. I, I invite him on tonight. Um, this is Andrew, like his. Yeah, he doesn't type so good. So it's hard to read what he said. Yeah. But um, uh, he's fighting Charles Garner, and if this is the guy I think it is, the guy that was gonna fight Reichart, because this is a different profile than I talked to last time. Um, this guy's in trouble, man. Charles Garner is a pro. He's for real, real. Like he's a good ass boxer, man. Like yeah. And this is that kickboxer guy, I think. So uh. I'd like to talk with him too. I'd be like, man, are you, sh you sure you're down with this one? Like, this one could be bad. But uh, it seems like that reservation show's back on the Ben yeah. Butcher show. Yeah, I've seen that. When is that going to be? The, I think like the 15 or something like that. I'm trying, I wanted, I, I was trying to get Benny the Butcher on here. Let's see if it could happen. Yeah. I like to talk about that show. It's so weird that, like, we didn't hear about a show. All of a sudden, there's a show. Then there's no show. And now it's going to be in the future. Like, I don't know. It's 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 kind of smell fishy here, caveman. Yeah, it smells scammy. I don't know. Yeah. We'll find out though. And the way the guy was talking, it didn't seem like there's any commission or anything. Like, dude, if this guy is like an amateur with like like no recorded fights, he shouldn't be fighting a pro boxer, man. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that ain't right. It's just like what happened earlier. Like, there's no way well, I mean, like, this is just a trial, but Josh and Bobby, like, that's not really a fair matchup. Like, I don't know. Like, the world's in chaos right now. Yeah. But bare knuckles, like, it is what it is. It's whatever. That's a trial. That's not like a, a something they're selling tickets to. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, right. Tickets for this show. Right. Yeah. I don't know. And then Reichardt is fighting um, Skyler in Ohio. In Ohio, yeah. I heard Mark Coleman could be a special guest over there. Yeah. When we get Coleman out, we're going to tell him about the 765 guys. Yeah. And uh, tell him to watch that fight. And tell him to show for uh, Josh. <laughs> yeah. If, if Skyler beats Josh, man, we got to have Skyler on. Yes. And I got, and, and if, 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 okay, if Skyler beat Josh, I'll kiss Skyler's ass. I, I'll be like, it's an MMA fight, right? Yes. Man, if Skyler. Skylar, if you submit Josh, I'll give you two hundred and fifty dollars. You heard it right here on Caveman's Corner. Two hundred and fifty dollars if you sub him. Not if you if you knock him out, like whatever. Like that's that's just you guys. But if you sub him, I'll give you two hundred and fifty bucks cash. Right here on Caveman's Corner. Yeah. Better be working on your jujitsu skills. Mm -hmm. He's gonna do it now, dude. He's gonna hit like I know, like, right? <laughs> I don't have to pay that motherfucker. I will pay you if you do it, though, for real. I don't care. Like, I'll work overtime and make that money and pay it back. Huh? I'll be slaving at my machine shop to make you some cash, but I will do that. You hear that, Skyler? Yeah, hear that, Reichardt? You better not cost him 200. Reichardt's going to, like, throw the fight for 125. <laughs> oh, man. Just put that shit. Yeah, because like you were making fun and, uh, of his voice. What's that? Because you were making fun of his voice that one episode. Yeah, yeah I did because he, he stiffed us. <laughs> so, uh, oh, $200, yeah, 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 $100, yeah, $100 to uh, the Caveman Corner Fighter tonight at um, K4. Uh, me and Ray are going to pick that. Uh, I think we're going to be doing some um, podcast with Ben. We were supposed to do one tonight. I don't know what happened. Uh, I haven't really talked to Ben, though. It might have been my fault. So, we'll figure that out. And then next week we'll have somebody. Uh, we, sh whenever we get Frank Shamrock, we'll make an announcement. We'll put the thing in. But please like and support us. Um, subscribe, send the stars. 
Um, we we'll still have a Patreon. We're gonna be making a face. Uh, we already have a Facebook page. We'll be making an Instagram page soon, so Ray can go wild on that too. And uh, <laughs> whenever he's banned from all the other stuff, you can put it on there. And mm-hmm. thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. And you did. You got Ken Shamrock. Yeah. And we'll make fun of him because he was nice to him, even though he made fun <laughs> of my haircut. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Shamrock was nice today. Good. I'm glad you guys had a good time. And uh, oh, oh, I'm proud oh, wait, of Ray. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What's this? What's that? He said, don't forget. Let's go next week. To Integrity. Yeah. I'm ready, Ed. John Forrester. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome, John. John. Thank you, man. We appreciate your your you viewing us. Please like and yeah. subscribe. Hey, John, next um. Uh... Uh, podcast, we go work on uh, Frank Shamrock. We had Ken the other day, Friday. We had Ken Shamrock. Is that up, Caveman, on YouTube? Yeah, that's on YouTube. What's up, fucker? Okay. Yeah, so he's gonna watch the show. <laughs> I want some rice dog. Oh, I know he's talking about that rice I had with the patalios. <laughs> yeah, that sounds racist. As a racist, I'm just kidding. Us. Uh... <laughs> Remember when I had Coleman on? He said all this stuff. So, like, that, I'm not going to say what Coleman said, but uh, yeah. we had Coleman on, and he was so drunk. And uh, yeah. he was talking mad shit to Ray. Wow. It was so funny because we had him on for, like, six, over six hours. Uh, and then, like, we, the first two hours, it wasn't even live on. We wasn't even recording. Remember? Yeah, we couldn't because he was, like, we couldn't even really understand what he was saying. He was, like, so drunk. And uh, I had to edit so much of that podcast out because he said so many horrible things. But he's not racist really at all. Like, I don't want to give that impression. If I thought he was racist, I would have posted that stuff. But um, he was just drunk and having a good time with Ray. And, like, man, like, he's just, he was going through a tough time. So uh, I wanted to, like, not put his name through the mud. I mean, I probably could have made a lot of money if I did that. But, um, like, I still have that, actually. So maybe someday if you ever really pissed me off. No, I'm just kidding. But, um. <laughs> Yeah, he, we weren't even supposed to do podcasts with him. He just called Ray, and he's like, oh, "Let's do it right now." And uh, yeah. we, we were podcasting with someone else, and we hung up. We like we kicked up. We had Corey on. It oh, was Corey! And I had Corey in the studio. I was like, "All right, Wait, Corey, Corey you gotta who? go home." Corey uh, Chapman. He was because he was training with um, he was training down in Arizona with uh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we kicked him off. Hey, we yeah, got more coming. Bye. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go, Doc. We're gonna. You just go sit over here, and we we turned his mic off, and we. <laughs> that yeah. was Mark Coleman interview. Oh, but that was funny. Oh, uh, oh, uh, we kicked him out. <laughs> Matt Hughes' game. He'll message you. Oh, okay, Ed. Yeah, we were talking about that. Me and Ed was talking about that. Ed said, "Hey, man, he been talking to Matt, and he was." That's talking. awesome, dude. Matt Hughes. Was one of my heroes, dude. I uh, I have that his his walkout song on the playlist, and uh, I already thought about coming out to it a couple times, but I didn't. I didn't want to carry the weight of the song. I don't think I could hang hang like Matt Hughes, but um, my wife knows how much I love Matt Hughes, dude. I I would cry when he lost. Like I was so upset, and when he beat yeah. Hoist Gracie, it was like, like I he, love Hoist Gracie too, but like he smashed Hoist Gracie with jujitsu too. It, it was like it was like hey, okay, man, it was like back in '93 versus the modern times MMA. Yeah, dude, like he and Hoist Gracie me. pop hopper steroids that time too. <laughs> yeah, here, like fuck that. These guys are strong. Yeah. I gotta take some steroids. Yeah, <laughs> and it, man, he still beat him too. Hughes is such a tough guy, and like that, it's inspirational. How he's come back from that uh, the accident he was in too. So it'd be great if you could get Matt Hughes too. That'd be uh, he's one of my personal heroes too. Yeah, Ed, you and Ed could come on us, come with us on that one too for a host. Yeah, for sure, definitely for sure. Yeah, I just saw some video of Matt Hughes like teaching, and uh, like he looked pretty good. It was it was like really cool to see, man. It made my day. Yeah, his jujitsu. He got when he was fighting with um uh, Pat Miletic. He was training with him, I should say, and his jujitsu mm-hmm. got it was great. It's the it's really really good. It's so under, it's probably the most underrated part of his game. Right, right. Was he, such a, he was such a good wrestler. Yeah, like people people just miss that like grappling. See, Ed, have a good night, man. Thank you. All right, Ed, man. I'll see you next week, buddy. 
All right. I will uh, I'll hook you guys up. It'd be great. Right. Cool. All right. I uh, appreciate you, Ray. Thank you very much for coming on with me. I wanted to talk about, uh, like I like I said, I was irate about the Bubba thing, and then I was kind of happy that he uh, he messaged Butch, so I'm not mad anymore, even okay. though I'm mad for a minute. Yeah. But uh, it was cool to uh, it was cool to see. I'm really proud of Josh for hanging with him, man. Like it was awesome to see. Yeah, like I said, man, K, man, I'm proud of them. They came to fight, you know. They expect both of them, man. They came to put, they, you know, they was doing their thing and. You know, cardio hits, you know, you got to, you know, fighting with no cardio sucks, man. Yeah, it sure does. All right. Uh, All we're right. out of here. This is a long one anyway. So good night, guys. Thank you. Good Please night, everybody. Subscribe and support. We, uh, see you next time. Peace.